All right. Good morning, Madam. Are we on the record? No, we're not on the record yet. Could I request that we be on the record? It's a motion for continuance that I'm asking the court to consider. All right. Are you the attorney on this case? I am not, Your Honor. And that's part of the basis for the continuance. Uh, Lee Who's Cutter, the attorney? Lee Cutter is the attorney of and record. Where is she? Uh, she is on her way to Guadalupe County for another criminal matter, Your Honor. And she's going to be there probably the majority of the morning. And then in the afternoon, she's specially set in front of District Judge Forte. Okay, well, she'll be stop over here in this afternoon. Because um, let me ask you this, yeah, yeah. the matter that she's going to another county for, is that a jury trial? It's not a jury trial to my own. This is, she should have came here first. I understand that, Your Honor. Um, if I could just be heard, I'd... No, she needs to be here. I don't know why people are thinking that this is not a criminal district court and that attorneys don't need to come here. This is a jury trial. Where she's going out of county is not a jury trial. This case, I'm sorry, sir, what's your name? Manuel. Manuel Rodriguez. Thank you. This case has been set for jury trial. This is the eighth setting. So I don't know why someone would go to another county as opposed to coming to a court where they have a jury trial set. So we will not be going on the record. She will need to be here. I understand that, Your Honor. And from my understanding of it, there was a jury trial setting in November and December, but those were actually settings for bond motions. So I don't know that they're actually true trial settings, Your Honor. We're here today for a jury trial. And I understand. And I did approach the court yesterday with the motion for a continuance. Yeah, and I, I was not hearing that. I want you to hear me clearly. That attorney is in another county for a case that's not set for jury trial. This is set for jury trial this morning. I don't understand why people don't understand that one, and I consider myself reasonable, one, that jury trials take, pre criminal jury trials take precedence over civil matters. I don't know why people don't understand that. District court matters take precedent over misdemeanor courts. I don't know why attorneys are acting as though they don't understand that. So we will not be going on record. I will not be hearing this motion. She needs to be here. So whenever she comes back from that other county that she's in, I will hear that motion. I understand. And whether or not I um, grant her motion for continuance, I do not know. But what I do know, and she needs to be informed of, is that criminal matters take precedence over civil matters. And when I give people leave to do civil cases beforehand, that's me being kind, but they don't take precedence. And so go forth and tell other attorneys that one district court takes precedent over misdemeanors because people are seem to have forgotten that. And that district court matters take precedence over civil matters. And that anytime there's a jury trial set, at least in the 187th, and you're going to some other county and that's not a jury trial setting and it's not um, specially set, they need to be here. I understand your honor. All right, thank you. Thank you. 23 CR. 5033, State of Texas versus Frank Javier Hasso. Can I have the parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Defense. Your Honor, good morning. Frankie Sandoval on behalf of Mr. Hasso. And are you Mr. Hasso? That's correct, Your Honor. Counsel, have you received all the discovery in this case and did you review it with your client? We have, Your Honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Mr. Hasso, I'm showing you what's entitled application for community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it? That's correct. Yeah. Showing you the true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Correct. Yes, ma'am. Counsel, you waive the reading of the indictment? I do, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you what's entitled court admonishments and defendants waivers and affidavit of admonitions. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? That's correct, Your Honor. Did you understand you're charged with offense of possession of a controlled substance, penalty group one, four to 200 grams, that's a second degree felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from two to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Sufficient evidence to find you guilty and the court will find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? In the interest of justice, that would be our request, Judge. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Your Honor, Mr. Hassel presents himself here accepting full responsibility and wishing to put this matter behind him by beginning this community supervision offer. All right. So 
How many children do you have? I have two, Your Honor. What are their ages? 23 and 20. All right. If you were released today, who would you be living with? With my cousin. Does your cousin have any criminal history? No, sir. I mean, I'm excuse me, Your Honor. No, ma'am. That's okay. Mom always says when people <laughs> address me as sir, that means that they're nervous. Okay. So settle down. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. So these tattoos you have, do they have significant meaning? And you know what I mean? Yes, they do. All right. All right. So there's going to be a gang supervision. You understand? Sure. All right. So are you currently active? No. And which gang? Well, it's, it's previous gang. I'm no longer involved in. All right. Well, what previous gang? Uh, ATM. ATM, like the ATM machine? Like the ATM as in the football team. <laughs> All right. All right. Have you ever been employed? Yes, of course. Doing what? Um, all sorts of things. Uh, tattoos, uh, artists, um, mechanics. Did you do any of your own tattoos? I did. Which ones? On my, on, they're on my legs. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I don't think I, I need to see that. But I was going to tell you whether or not, based upon your tattoos that you've done, whether or not you should get more education in that field or maybe decide something new. Thank you. All right. What's your drug of choice? None anymore. Well, when you're in the free world, because happy. I know it's a little bit hard to make drugs at the jail. So what was your drug of choice? Heroin. How often were you using? Every day. So is the last day you stopped using when you were arrested? That's correct. How far did you go in school? To 10th grade. Why did you drop out? Um, really no reasons. Okay. All right. Do you have any questions of your client? No, Your Honor. All right. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to sentence you to 10 years in the prison, suspended and probated for 10 years. There's a thousand dollar fine that will be probated. $57 restitution to SAPD for drug testing. 200 hours of community service restitution. Uh, probation, I will only allow him to buy out a hundred of those hours. The rest you will have to do. And if you're buying out those hours, the court, uh, puts it at $7 and 25 percent, 25 cents per hour. And I suggest the San Antonio food bank, but if there's another charity you wish to donate to, you can. Sure. And I only choose the, the San Antonio food bank because I know there's some issues with a uh, food shortage. Uh, we're going to do a gang supervision. There should be regular reporting by Zoom or in person. If he's not accepted in gang uh, supervision, then it's going to be field visits one time per month for at least six months. And then probation, if you want to do something less than that, just submit it to the court. There's going to be a TAP evaluation, and that's going to take place in custody. If the TAP evaluation, we're going to follow recommendations of, of the TAP evaluations. Proof of employment within 45 days of release. There should be no employment as a home health care provider with minors. There should be no unsupervised contact with minors. Uh, does your cousin live by himself? No, he lives with his wife and kids. How many children? Two. What are their ages? Um, I believe under age of 10. But, oh. um, I live, I, he has a back house that's separate from the, the house that I would be staying. And they, they don't go back there. All right, so here's the thing. I don't know if I want him living there or not, because I, I take people as human beings when they come before me, but you have the drug problem. You have the gang problem. And I just don't want that visited upon them. Sometimes family members enable us. They want to see the best in us. 
So they say, oh, yes, you can live here. And I don't want the children there picking up any bad habits. So I'm not going to allow, allow you to live uh, at a residence that has children. You understand? If there's an issue uh, with housing, there are plenty of places free in San Antonio to stay, okay? Sure. So there's to be no residing with any household with minors. If I may add, Joanna? Yes. Um, I really misunderstood the question when you asked about it. Is significant meaning for the gangs? I haven't been against since I was in school. Okay. Yeah, so I no, I understand. Else. But uh, I will tell you, sometimes... When people say, oh, I haven't been involved in a gang since school, and they could be 90 years old, but unless there's some documentation that they're no longer with a gang, probation is going to pick it up and it's going to be in the system as a gang member. Sure. And if that, that's something you wish to change, they'll be able to tell you how you can do that. All right. Uh, what I will do, uh, probation, the remaining 100 hours of community service, if he is in some type of trade school or if you're trying to better yourself so that you can get a better job, I'll consider um, waiving the remaining of those hours. You understand? Thank you. Uh, probation, is there anything else he needs? Uh, yes, there to be regular UAs and 90 meetings and 90 days. Is there anything else, probation? No, All right. Mr. Hasso, is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? Not that I can think of y'all. All right. I'm showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants' rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? I did, Your Honor. Dan? I did. All right. We can go off the record. In this court, to be successful on probation, communication is key. If you need something, Probation officer is right there. Just let them know. If you feel there's an issue that they're not addressing, you can always come back to court. But from here on out, everything that you do when you're on probation in this court, before you take an action, there are two questions you should ask yourself. Is this something that could potentially result in me going to prison for 10 years? If the answer is yes, don't do it. If it's maybe it could potentially result in me going to prison for 10 years, don't do it. You understand? I do. Know. I take no joy in sending people to prison for violating probation or sending people to prison, period, because that means that somebody was unsuccessful in their life. But your attorney, the deputies, and people who have been in this court before will tell you, but I will send people to prison if it's warranted. You understand? Of course. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you so much. Honey. You're welcome. Thank you for your words. All right. And what is that? Uh, is that a not a list? On your on your tattoo, that one. This is a Frankenstein heart. I'm sorry, what? Frankenstein heart. Oh, Frankenstein's heart. Why did you do that? What's going on? My name is Frank, so it was just. Oh, I'm saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Our thousand twenty three CR two nine seven one State of Texas versus Juan Gabriel Morales. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Frank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Defense. Carl Alexander for Mr. Morales. Are you Juan uh, Morales? Yes, I am. Counsel, have you received all the discovery and did you review it with your client? Yes, Your Honor. Off the record for a moment. Excuse me. You all need to move to that end on the front row. All right, we're back on the record. Mr. Morales, I'm showing you what's entitled application for deferred adjudication, or I guess it's just community supervision. Yes, Your Honor. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, I did. Showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, do you weigh the reading of the indictment? Yes, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, on both oh, counts? I'm sorry. Uh, we're um, waiving count one and proceeding on count two. I'm sorry, Judge. Any objection? No, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Morales, I'm showing you what's entitled court admonishments and defendants waivers and affidavit of admonitions. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Did you understand in count two, you charged with possession of a controlled substance penalty group one, four to 200 grams. That's a second degree felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from two to 20 years in prison and up to $10,000 fine. Did you understand? In attachments, the court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Uh, no, Your Honor, just ask that you call the people. All right. Mr. Morales, do you have any children? I do. I have one son. What is his age? Uh, 13. And does he live with you? Mm -hmm. Do you live with anyone? 
No, I do not. So you live by yourself? Apartment, home? Uh, next door to my mom. I'm sorry? Next door, and a home next door to my mother's. Are you employed? Not at the moment, no. How long has it been since you've been employed? Uh, a couple of years now. Uh, since my mother had her strokes in 2021. All right, so how are you supporting yourself? Just by doing odd jobs here and there, just enough to get by. It's been difficult with, uh, with her needing 24 hour care and not qualifying for in home health care. It's, it's difficult. Okay. All right, when you're drug tested today, what are the results going to be? And just know that you're going to get drug tested today. I'm sure your attorney probably already told you that. So be honest with me. No, I'll be, I'll be positive. What are you going to be positive for? So how often have you been using meth? Um, daily, but not like huge amounts. I'm sorry, what? Daily. Say daily. All right. Do you have any gang affiliation? Have you ever been to prison? Yeah. For what? Same thing. Possession. I'm sorry. Possession of methamphetamine. All right. Is there anything else from either side? Oh, and I know it states you. Thank you. No, no, Your Honor. She said he mentioned his mother. Um, he is essentially her only caregiver, and that's part of why the state was kind enough to make such a generous offer so that he could continue to provide care. Uh, for his mother because uh, it's not her fault that, that he has a drug problem yeah. but he can't be providing great care if he's using meth daily and hopefully he's not using meth daily over his mom no no i mean it's it's, it's, it's difficult to, to say i don't do anything like that when i'm with her that's what i mean so when i drive her around I'm not doing anything like that so i have brothers and sisters that also try to help out but to mainly me because I do that. all right so the other brothers and sisters i'm assuming they don't have any drug problems no do they have employment they do but uh, for me i know i i voluntarily slowed down to do to do this with her because we didn't have anybody else to, to all right do. they're going to have to pick someone better because you are not in any type of shape to be caring for someone who is not at 100 percent but no, I don't think I do a bad job. Okay. All right, this. And could you call Leo, please? All right. The court then, as previously stated, is finding you guilty. The court was sentenced you to five years in the prison, suspended and probated for seven years. There's a thousand dollar fine that will be probated. There is to be $57 restitution to SAPD for drug testing. I'm going to want 90 meetings in 90 days, and that's sober meetings. TAP evaluation, that can be done while he's out of custody. If you miss your TAP appointment, that would be a violation of your probation. And you could potentially go to prison for five years, or you could be looking at doing a TAP evaluation at the jail. Do you understand? Do a referral to felony drug court. There's to be 200 hours of community service restitution. Uh, I am not waiving any of those hours. I am going to require him to do parenting classes. And those hours are not to be waived without permission from the court. Usually, I will waive certain hours if you complete parenting classes, but it appears that you have too much time on your hand. And what I've learned from being in treatment courts is when you have too much time on your hands, then you end up falling back into old ways, which is doing drugs. I'm going to want proof of employment within 30 days. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. Uh, probation. I'm going to want field visits one time per month. And please do a field visit at his mother's house while he's there. And also a field visit at his house to make sure that she's doing okay. 
So uh, field visits one time per month until further notice. And we're going to do the UA hotline. Until further notice. There's to be regular reporting by Zoom or in person. And probation, if you want to count the field visit as a reporting, you can. How far did you go in school? On graduation, high school. All right, what are you planning on doing with the rest of your life? So I actually have a couple of different things going on at the moment that I'm trying to establish. Um, what are your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations? Well, I have two, two brands that I'm working on building right now, a custom bike building and a clothing line. All right, before you look into doing grants for that, you need to determine whether or not you're precluded from receiving those grants based upon your history before right. you put all that work in. Oh, I've already been started without the grants. Okay. All right. Then if he actually does something with his hopes and dreams, then the court will consider maybe waiving some of it, some of his community service hours. But you have to develop a plan and start working that plan for the court to consider that. Do you understand? Probation, is there anything else he needs? All right. Is there anything else you need from the court? Show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants' rights to appeal. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? All right, we can go off the record. In this courtroom, in order to be successful on probation, communication is key. If you have an issue, ask probation. Let them know about it. They'll try to get you to help you need. If you feel like there's an issue that they're not addressing, you can always come to the court. Do you understand? All right. And do not be that person where your mom is waiting for you, wondering where you are, and there's somebody dead in San Antonio, and it's you. Because sometimes the last time you use is the last time you use. You understand? All right. Good luck to you.